Welcome everyone to Sound Sangha. My name is Michael, our weekly mindfulness group. If it's your first time here, thanks for coming and looking forward to listening with you all. And uh, the structure is that I give a, a talk for about 10 minutes and then we have a 20 minute guided meditation period. Oh no, yeah, 20 minutes. And then we have about 15 minutes of discussion, sometimes longer afterwards. And I record this part, the, the talk and the guided meditation, which today will have some live music actually. So it won't be so much of a guided meditation, but more of a listening experience. And for today's theme, I wanted to dive into uh, a, a couple of lines from a T.S. Eliot poem that I mentioned it a few weeks ago. And the excerpt that I mentioned was music heard so deeply that it's not heard at all, but you are the music while the music lasts. And this is the end of a, a long poem that's called the dry salvages. And I'll just read the last uh, stanza so it's, it has a little more context. And he writes, for most of us, there is only the unattended moment, the moment in and out of time, the distraction fit, lost in a shaft of sunlight, mm. the wild time unseen, or the winter lightning, or the waterfall, or music heard so deeply that it is not heard at all, but you are the music while the music lasts. And so I wanted to just kind of go into each of those words in that last part. Um, I say this phrase a lot on the podcast that I host, but each word becomes a holographic portal into a deeper teaching and a, and a deeper resonance to a lot of the things that we talk about here at Sound Sangha. And this poem, The Dry Salvages, was actually written in 1940 when Eliot was living in London during the bombings, during the Germans bombing England. So it's amazing to think about what kind of beauty and what kind of depth of meaning can come from even the most horrible circumstances. And of course, I'm not alone in hoping that we'll see flourishing of poetry and artwork and beauty during the wars that are happening now on our planet. And what I wanted to talk about today in terms of this quote is the boundless, ephemeral, dissolving space that's between the listener and the listened, the thing that we're listening to, the experience that we're listening to. And deep listening, the practice that this group is based upon, the practice of from Pauline Oliveros, um, is many things. It's, it's, it's a very complicated thing to describe quickly, but I often talk of it as a, a navigation, an experiential navigation of spectra, of gradients of experience. So the gradient of experience of hearing and listening, of sound and silence, of inner listening and outer listening, of focal and global listening, and also the listener and what is listened to. And this idea of becoming music, as long as the music lasts, for me, resonates deeply with this idea. So we become part of what we're listening to. And it goes beyond hearing. You know, that's, that's the, one of the magical things about deep listening is that it really doesn't have that much to do with hearing when you get into the depths of deep listening. And in this quote... Mm -hmm. The music is not heard at all, but you are the music. For me, this is pointing to the paradox of becoming. So another one of these dualisms that we transcend is the self and the sound. So there's um, there's a, an inherent dualism maybe. And when, when, when we hear sounds, we think of sounds as separate as out there and me, I'm in here, sounds are out there. But this dualism is one of these things that dissolves when we embrace this notion of becoming the music as we listen to it. In Nada Brahma, in, in um, the yoga of sound practice from Hinduism, it's taught that Om is the primordial sound of creation. 
and that we're mere ripples in an interconnected vibration that started with the om, with the, with the first sound of creation. So our atoms are swirling and vibrating, our blood is flowing, our hearts are beating, our breath is coming in and out like an ocean of sound, of sounding. And mindfulness of listening, this practice of deep listening, is a dropping away of identifying, let alone if we like or dislike sound or music, but it's just a simple act of listening. It's surfing on these expanding sound waves that started with this ohm sound that are engulfing and merging with our present awareness. And there's a movement in this awareness. It's not a static awareness, it's a dance. So we're dancing with the sound when we become sound. You know, we're, we're feeling the fluidity of presence and the boundaries of the self become fluid. And this, was, this is what allows for this deeper connection that Eliot, T.S. Eliot's pointing to. And as we become music that we're listening to, that we don't hear it anymore, we actually are the music that we're hearing, another dichotomy begins to dissolve. And that's of being and becoming. So becoming has this connotation of, of change, of evolving into something different, of, of shedding the skin of the past and becoming a new, a new entity. But this, I think, is also uh, uh, one of these points of non-duality so that we realize that when we listen so deeply to music that it's not heard at all, but we are the music while it lasts, we think that we're becoming, but we're actually revealing a beingness, a sense that is always been there. It's always been there, you know, this listening. It's the primordial state. And this, in this return to beingness, we don't go anywhere, you know, we're nowhere, we're now here. When we transition from here, H-E-R-E, -E, to H-E-A-R, and through listening, through hearing, we become radically present in the present moment. And this leads to the final line of the poem, while the music lasts which to me also contains a paradox. So of course we talk a lot about in, in this group that listening and sound is ephemeral. It's constantly changing, it's constantly, it's invisible. It's constantly flowing from one to the next. As we listen to music, we can't freeze the notes in time. The notes, the silence, the silences all flow one into, one into another. And so it, becomes a practice of impermanence. And so while the music lasts, it, it has that precious, precious jewel of, of impermanence in it as well, that as we're listening, we realize this sequence of notes, let's say, will never be here again. You know, this, this moment of silence will never be here again. We're, we're in this flow of, of time in our experience of space time. But the paradox for me is that I mentioned earlier Nada Brahma and the, the primordial Om that those fo that followers of Nada Brahma, of Nada Yoga, say was the beginning of the universe. And we have a similar creation myth in our um, science-based, let's say, society, and that's of the Big Bang, you know. So that was the primordial Om, that was the beginning of of everything is what scientists tell us in this current story. And so if we trace back the music to that Big Bang, the music has continued for 14 billion years, you know, which is such a, a massively long amount of time, it might as well be forever because we can't really experience what 14 billion years feels like in our ephemeral bodies. So while the music lasts is true in one, in one aspect, that there is an, an, an end to the relative state of sounds moment to moment to moment, but in an absolute sense, the music never, never ends. You know, it's always continuing. And this dance of awareness and vibration continues on. So 
that's what I wanted to talk about today. So thank you all for listening. And in honor of this idea of while the music lasts, um, as I said at the beginning, if you weren't here, I'll, I'll repeat that for the meditation period, we, we do this from time to time where we listen to music. Sometimes it's recorded music that the meditation period is basically has a soundtrack to it and you can engage in it in any way that feels right. You know, if the music's too loud, so I'll be playing live music, I'll be playing um, these hung drum instruments. If the music feels too loud, you can turn it down. You can turn it off if you want to, if you really want to be in silence today. <clears throat> Otherwise, just explore this idea of becoming music, of the, the um, dissolving of the self in the act of listening, of letting go of expectations, of letting go of analyzing what's, what you're hearing, what you're listening to, and just surrendering to the flow and feeling in your body that you are the music while the music lasts. You are the music while the music lasts. So thank you for listening. And um, I'm going to transition back there. <laughs> you can turn your camera off today. You can lie down if you want. You can sit, you can stand. Um, like I said, you can get into a more formal meditation posture if that's helpful for you. Or you can just listen the way you would listen to music normally, but um, really trying to become absorbed in the sound.
of this practice be dedicated to the end of suffering of all beings. May all beings be safe. May all beings be peaceful. And may all beings be free. <laughs>